When you're in our county and you want to drive, just remember to go 55. Cause all around the county, every woman and man knows well. Oh, you know the kids are well. What's up guys, I'm Abby Martin and this is Breaking the Set. The surveillance state against us is growing exponentially by the day and the rationale to spy on us is becoming ever more trivial. But at the same time, the establishment is making it harder and harder to film them. It's an issue our next guest knows very well. He's been arrested multiple times for his attempts to flip the camera on the cops. So to talk about his experience fighting the police state and explain what rights we have, I'm joined by Ian Freeman host of the nationally syndicated radio talk show, Free Talk Live, and contributor to Cop Block. Ian, thank you so much for taking the time. Hey, Abby, thanks for having me. So you were just arrested a couple weeks ago for recording video in a public place. Um, you caught a good majority of the day on camera. Let's take a look at some of that footage. Just because you post a sign doesn't mean you get to eliminate the freedom of the press. And have you, are you familiar with the Glick decision? Sir, I am just I'm asking you, right you a question. Now, I'm telling you right officer. now, there is no videoing. What's your name, by the way? Officer Tenzar. There's no officer videoing Tenzar? in this town hall. Now, have you heard of the, gl the Glick decision? Are you refusing to shut off the video camera? Have you heard of the Glick decision? Are you refusing to shut I off the video camera? I am not refusing to shut off the video camera. Shut it off right I'm now, asking please. you, have you heard of the Glick decision? Sure. This is ridiculous, man. You were here last time when I was recording. So you got arrested for disorderly conduct, not for filming. I mean, were they just trying to create a reason and explain why the Glick decision is significant for incidents like this and others like it? Well, sure. So the Glick decision uh, was Simon Glick. He was an attorney in Boston who was recording the police doing something awful to, to another person. And of course, they arrested him for it. And thankfully, he's an attorney, so it was easy for him to take it to court and go all the way to the Supreme Court and get a ruling that basically reaffirms your right as, uh, as an individual to record government bureaucrats when they're on duty uh, in any public place. So that's what I was doing there at, uh, at Town Hall that day. And the reason they charged me with disorderly conduct is because Glick had basically beaten them down on the, the whole wiretapping claim. So disorderly conduct has always been this, this catch-all for uh, you know, any activist doing something or anybody doing something they don't like. If they don't actually have a law to get you with, they'll go with disorderly conduct or, you know, resisting arrest or some other catch-all. They have a handful of catch-alls, and that's one of them. So, Ian, we know that in some states have tried to make laws uh, passed to make filming illegal to film cops. I mean, are there any states that currently have these laws in the books preventing citizens from filming or have the, the courts kind of upheld the citizens' rights here? You know, I can't answer. There's 50 different states. There are some states like uh, Illinois where it's way worse than, uh, than other states, like with wiretapping laws. And of course, some states are two-party consent recording states versus one party, whereas, uh, you know, uh, wh where, for instance, the federal law is a uh, one party in that if one person knows that there's a recording going of a, of a conversation, then it's completely legal. Here in New Hampshire, for instance, it's a two-party state where everybody must know who's connected to a conversation that it's being recorded, which makes doing uh, undercover video work, like you know, busting a bad business or something, or in this case, bad bureaucrats, very difficult. Uh, I don't even know what the situation is in Massachusetts, but it was pretty clear that I wasn't, you know, undercover recording them or uh, or wiretapping in any way, you know, surreptitiously or secretly recording. So that's why they came came after me with the disorderly conduct charge. And in theory, I should be able to beat it. But then again, the the court system always tends to lean towards its own people. I mean, it, you're being prosecuted by the pro, you know, by the same folks as are running the court and in a lot of cases are your defense attorneys. I won't be accepting a state attorney to defend me, however I'll take it on myself. Uh, interesting, yeah, good point. I mean, every state has, has different laws. Um, of course, Cop Block founder Adam Mueller having to serve three months in jail for, for specifically this, uh, recording a conversation, trying, to, I mean, they're recording everything that we do. So when you're trying to record a conversation or try to expose some sort of corruption, of course, the law comes down hard on us. And um, I just wanted to ask sure. you, know, this technology exists now to surveil through walls. Cops might have the ability to bring drug sniffing dogs to your neighborhood and, and of course, trap wire. 
there. I mean, the extensive surveillance apparatus all across the country. Collectively, what is the biggest problem that arises from the surveillance state, Ian? Well, the, I mean, over time, it's your privacy. It just keeps getting eroded ever further. And the old question that uh, the state defenders will ask is, well, if you don't have anything to hide, why do you care? And the thing is, maybe you don't have anything to hide right now, but eventually they might decide to make something that you do illegal, and then you will have something to hide, but by that point, it might be too late. And of course, you can always turn that question back around on them. You know, these government bureaucrats that are arresting camera people left and right, what is it that they have to hide? What are they so afraid of? Maybe they're afraid that people are going to see that they really are nothing more than just a criminal gang. Uh, you know, government's nothing more than a criminal enterprise that's been very successful and that they're so brazen they can fly flags out in front of their offices. I mean, we saw with the Oscar Grant uh, video, Kelly Thomas, I mean, we would never know. And we would never hold these people accountable, even though, of course, Mayor Chalet didn't really get held accountable. But I mean, without video and without filming the cops, we would never know what they're doing. Of course, the chilling effect is really the problem with the surveillance state. Uh, Ian, you um, contribute a lot to Cop Block. What rights do people have? I don't think a lot of people know that they don't have to allow cops in their home and they don't have to allow cops to search their car. I mean, where can people find out what their rights are and just explain a little bit more about what people can do to fight the police state. Well, obviously, copblock.org is a great resource. Lots of good information there. Uh, the folks over at Flex Your Rights also do a good job of really laying out basic rights for folks. And you don't have an obligation to answer the door when the police are there. Obviously, they show you that on their television shows. Cop, uh, cops, for instance, is always going to show people answering the door and talking to them. Uh, you know, Hollywood movies are always going to show people going to the door and talking to the police. So you don't have to do what you see them do on TV. If the cops come to your house, House, you have no obligation to answer, talk to them in any way, shape, or form. If you are driving, uh, they do say, you know, I'm no attorney, but uh, they say that you don't have to answer any questions beyond providing, you know, your license and registration if you're driving. If you're sitting in a passenger seat, you don't have to provide them with anything in, you know, most places that I know of. Uh, so, you know, for instance, you can't be obligated to have a driver's license on you if you aren't driving. Uh, but people don't think about these things and they're trained to, uh, to answer questions. The police are trained to be very intimidating. So when the cops uh, tell someone to do something, they tend to do it. Uh, and people need to think twice before they just uh, jump to it and obey whatever it is that they're told to do. Because it's our obedience that has allowed things to become the way that they are. If people would stand up for the rights that they supposedly have, then maybe we would actually be able to retain them. But as long as people keep giving up their freedoms, keep being willing to go along to get along, then we'll just keep losing more of it over time as they just whittle it away. Absolutely. Uh, what about just walking around? I mean, when cops stop you and ask you, you know, do you have your ID on you and kind of bully you under that? Do you, you just said you don't really need to carry an ID or show cops an ID, right? No matter where Some you are. States some states claim that you have to tell them who uh, you are if they inquire, and I don't know which states those are off offhand. Obviously, like I said, there's mm. 50 of them. Uh, but you, they can't possibly obligate you to have an ID because it would require you to be, you know, going down to some government agency and submit yourself to their IDing process. You should be able to walk from point A to point B without carrying identification. But that doesn't mean they won't ask you. And a cop can stop you anywhere uh, and ask you something, just like any other human being can stop you uh, on the street and ask you something. But you don't have an obligation to answer their questions. In fact, one of the best things you can do is ask them questions and turn. Uh, you know, an old sales adage is that he who asks the questions is winning. And so if you ask them the question, am I being detained? They usually have to answer that question. And if you're not being detained, then ask, am I free to go? And then get out of there and go, you know, on with your day and be productive. Good point, Ian. A really good point for activists, too, to, to really get that firsthand. Am I being detained? If I'm not, you can leave. Um, really important. Thank you so much for breaking all that down. Um, it is getting more pervasive, Ian, and we really do need to know our rights. Most important thing we can know. Ian Freeman. Oh, I'm sorry. Continue. I was just going to say, one of the other most important things you can do is to get together with other people who think like you do. So copblock.org has the ability to, you know, kind of... Uh, so there are different cop block chapters around the country, but uh, there's a good group of them up here in New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project where liberty-minded people are all 
you know, we're co collecting into one place so we can be even more effective with our activism. And that website's freestateproject.org. Absolutely. Everyone check out coplock.org, freestateproject.org. I've been meaning to go down to New Hampshire and check it out. I heard there's a lot of cool stuff going on you down should. there. Ian Freeman, uh, host of the nationally syndicated talk show, Free Talk Live. And thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. This episode of Cop Block is brought to you by Freekeen.com.